In the eyes of her overseer, she was a brute, a slave to be beaten, pinched, and pushed about. One of the first strikes of the cotton factory operatives that ever took place in this country was in Lowell in October 1936. 1836. <laughs> when it was announced that wages were to be cut down, great indignation was felt, and it was decided to strike en masse. This was done. The mills were shut down. The girls went in procession from their several corporations to the Grove on Chapel Hill. They listened to incendiary speeches from early labor reformers. One of the girls stood up on a pump and gave vent to the feelings of her companions in a neat speech, declaring that it was their duty to resist all attempts at cutting down wages. This was the first time a woman had ever spoken publicly in Lowell. <laughs> and the audience met that with surprise and consternation. <laughs> My own recollections of the strike was very vivid. I worked in the lower rooms where I first heard the strike fully proposed, and I had been an ardent listener to what was being said against the attempt at oppression on the part of the corporation, and naturally, I took sides with the strikers. When the day came on which the girls were to turn out, those in the upper rooms started first. And so many of them left that the, that the mill was immediately shut down. Mm -hmm. Then the girls in my room began to look at each other, uncertain of what to do, irresolute. They started to ask each <coughs> other, would you, shall we turn out? And not one of them having the courage to lead off. I, who began to think that they would not go out after all of their talk, became impatient and started to go on ahead, saying with childish bravado, I don't care what you do, I am going to turn out, whether anyone else does or not. And I walked out. And they followed. I was followed by the others, and, and I looked back over that long line that followed me. I was more proud than I've ever been at any success I may have achieved. <laughs>